ज्ञानति मिलाके ज्ञानंजन शलाकला और में मिले तम श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्यम श्री गुरु गौरांगी राम हरे 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 Hare Krishna, thank you very much for the Mangla Charan. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji, uh, you have raised your hand, Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Today we have with us Rukma Das, Prabhu ji, and he will. We please, Prabhu ji, accept our humble obeisances from everybody in this group, Prabhu ji. There will be more people joining, so accept their humble obeisances as well. Prabhuji, we are reading the Bhagavad Gita as it is, and we are on chapter eighteen. Prabhuji, chapter eighteen is the perfection of renunciation, and today we'll be on text fifty till fifty-three. Prabhuji, so Prabhuji, I hand over to you. Okay, Kindly thank you. Us. Yeah, so we'll do fifty, and then three verses are together. Fifty-one to I mean, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three. Those are together. So I'll read the Sanskrit for both of them. Siddhim prapto yatha Brahma tatha pnoti ni bodhi me samasnaiva kantiya nishta kyaanya shi ya para. O son of Kunti, learn from me how one has sorry one who has achieved this perfection can attain. To the supreme perfection stage, stage, Brahman, the stage of highest knowledge, by acting in the in the way I shall now summarize. Uh, so you can tell someone to read the purport. It's a short purport. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji, I'll read the purport. Purport by Shila Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada ki uh, jai. jai. The Lord describes for Arjuna how can. one achieve the highest perfectional stage simply by being engaged in the occupational duty performing that duty for the supreme personality of godhead one attains the supreme stage of brahman simply by renouncing the result of his work for the satisfaction of the supreme lord that is the process of self realization the actual perfection of knowledge is in attaining pure krishna consciousness that is described in the following verses text 51 to 
बुद्धिया विशुद्ध युक्त धीर्यात आत्मनाम नियम में युचा शब्द दिन विषयम स्थित्वा रागद्वेशो विदुदश्यचा विविक्ता सेवी लगुवाशी यता वक्काया मानसा ध्यान योगा परो नित्यम वैराग्यम समुपश्विता अहंकारम बलम दर्पण कामम कोतम परिग्रहम मुच्छर निर्मम शांतो धम्म भूया यकल्पति translation <clears throat> being purified by his intelligence and controlling the mind with determination giving up the objects of sense gratification being freed from the attachment and hatred one who lives in a secluded place who eats little who controls his body mind and power of speech who is always in trance and who is detached free from false ego false strength false Right. Right. Lust, anger, those are material things. Free from false proprietorship and peaceful, such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self-realization. You can read the purport, Madhuji. Hare Krishna, purport by Shri La Prabhupad, Shri La Prabhupad ki jai. Jai. When one is purified by intelligence, he keeps himself in the mode of goodness. Thus. One become, becomes the controller of the mind and is always in trance. He is not attached to the objects of sense gratification and he is free from attachment and hatred in his activities. Such a detached person naturally prefers to live in a secluded place. He does not eat more than what is required and he controls the activities of his body and mind. He has no false ego because he does not accept the body as himself, nor has he a desire to make the body fat and strong by accepting so many material things. Because he has no bodily concept of life, he is not falsely proud. He is satisfied with everything that is offered to him by the grace of Lord, and he is never angry in the absence of sense gratification. Nor does he endeavor to acquire sense objects. Thus, when he is completely free from false ego, he becomes non-attached to all material things, and that is the stage of self-realization of Brahman. That stage is called the Brahma Bhuta stage. When one is free from material conception of life, he becomes peaceful and cannot be agitated. This is described in the Bhagavad Gita 2.70. Apurya manam achala pratishtam samudram apat pravishati yada yadvat tadvat kamayam prasavi shanti sarve sa shantim apnoti na kama kami. A person who is not disturbed by the instant flow of desires that enters like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace, and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Babu. <clears throat> so, if you know, I mean, if you go a little backwards, Krishna has expl uh, explained different qualities of people who follow Varna and Ashram. And he said, whether one is a Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sutra, it does not matter. But by the worship of the Supreme Personality of God, it, one's life can become perfect. So one point we should understand in this couple of verses, previous verses, is that it does not matter what Varna you belong to, but by worship of Krishna, you will get perfection. And then it's said that it's better you follow your nature. Now, many people do not know nature. Nature means your physio and psychological nature. Whatever your nature is, you follow your nature and work accordingly. And if you work like that, 
and offer the results of your work to Krishna, that you'll become perfect. So the main point in the verse number 50 is, Krishna is telling Arjuna how to attain highest professional stage of life is by engaging in one's occupational duty, but for Krishna. And that means one is to renounce one's result of work for the satisfaction of Krishna. It does not matter what occupation you are, according to one and Ashram. And this is how one progresses and advise, uh, advances on the path of self-realization. And the perfection will automatically follow when you take the path of pure Krishna Bhakti or pure Krishna Consciousness. So it means Krishna Consciousness is for everyone. Anyone who will accept Krishna Consciousness will attain perfection. So we just go a little backwards also. If you go back to the 12th chapter, verse number 9, uh, how to practice Krishna Consciousness, Krishna Shri Prabhupada explains in a very sweet and a small, in a very straightforward. So, whether you can open 12, 9, the second purport, I mean, the second paragraph, 12, 9, and read that section. From Bhakti Yoga? Yeah, Bhakti Yoga, verse number 9. Bhakti Yoga is the purification of the senses. At present moment in material existence, the senses sorry, are sorry, almost... Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you can carry on, but actually the last paragraph is most important. Just go to the last paragraph. To practice the regulative principles? Yes, 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 from there. Okay. To practice the regulative <clears throat> principles of Bhakti Yoga, one should, under the guidance of an expert spiritual master, follow certain principles. One should rise early in the morning, take bath, enter the temple, and offer prayers and chant Hare Krishna, then collect flowers to offer to the deity, cook foodstuffs to offer to the deity, take prasadam, and so on. There are various rules and regulations which one should follow, and one should constantly hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from pure devotees. This practice can help anyone rise to the level of love of God, and then he's sure of his progress into the spiritual kingdom of God. This practice of bhakti yoga, under the rules and regulations, with the directions of the spiritual master, will surely bring one to the stage of love of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So in just one paragraph, if we can follow what Sri Prabhupada is saying here, that is called Bhakti Yoga. So it does not matter whether you are Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya or Sutra. If you can follow this process, see the first thing he says, one must accept the guidance or the lotus feet of one's spiritual master. And even Rupa Goswami says this in the Nectar of Devotion. He says many, many things, but the first rule he is saying is, Ado Guru Pada Ashrayam. First of all, accept the feet of a Guru. And then the Bhakti Yoga starts. And even Krishna says in the fourth chapter, verse number 34, Tad vidhi Just try to approach a spiritual master, render service to him submissively, and inquire from him. And in the verse which follows 35 says, having accepted the switch master and having attained the knowledge, you never fall again into illusion. This is the beauty of accepting the switch master. If you want to come out of illusion, in Sanskrit it's called moha. If you want to come out of moha, then this is the way out. Now it's not restricted to one person. No, it's open for all. First thing is we have to have the desire that I want to know what is absolute truth or I want to accept the path of self-realization. Just like the biggest difference between animal life and a human life is animal life means no control of senses. Human life begins with the control of senses. Biggest difference. And when someone starts controlling the senses, 
and then it pursues the path of self-realization, the purity will definitely follow. And here Sri Prabhupada is giving a practical way of how to do, uh, do it. Anyone who takes up the path of self-realization or bhakti yoga should rise early in the morning, which is not easy in the beginning, but if you put it into practice, it becomes very easy and you can't live without it. And then you take a bath, enter the temple, offer your prayers. Now here prayers means prayers to your speech master, Mangala Charana, the Guru Ashtakam, Samsara Dava, Nalalita Loka, and so on. So whether you are staying in the temple or you are staying at the home, the rule is still the same. Even at home, you can offer these eight prayers. If you don't have all the facilities, just can offer one lamp. Or if you don't have a lamp, offer an incense and flowers. And then offer these prayers, offer your prayers to Tulsi, the Tulsi Maharani, and then take blessings from Tulsi and start your japa. That's why it says, offer prayers, chant Hare Krishna. Collect flowers for the deity, cook for Krishna, and eat prasadam, and discuss and hear Srimad Bhagavad Gita Bhagavatam in association of pure devotees. This will take the self-realization up, up, up till you attain the love of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu calls these three things. Sambandha, Abhidaya, Prayojana. Sambandha means the moment you start self-realization, you understand your relationship with Krishna. Second thing is having understood the relationship, you act in that relationship. Means you act according to the nine lips of devotional service, the rules and regulations, the nine processes of devotional service. Anyone of you knows all nine of them? Anybody likes to try? First one is hearing, which is the second, third, and so on. Anybody likes to try? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. So this is called Navda Bhakti. In one word, it's called Abhide. Abhide means following the nine processes of bhakti. Now, if you follow your nine bhakti, for certain or, or for sure, guarantee, you'll attain the love of God. That is called Prayojana. Prayojana in simple Sanskrit is called goal of life. And the goal of life means to attain the love of Krishna. Even if you're following, I mean, if you are able to perform your nine limbs of devotional service, as the senses become purified, you will attain the love of God. There is no doubt about it. Sri Prabhupada says in one lecture, what is Bhakti Yoga? Bhakti Yoga means to render service to Krishna with purified senses. You'll find that in the beginning, out of pride, we may think I'm very pure. But as you start practicing, hearing, chanting, remembering, and so on, especially chanting, you'll realize that actually we are not pure. And especially our senses are not pure. Our eyes are not pure. Nose is not pure. Ears are not pure. Our thoughts are not pure. Our mind is not pure. And then you'll pursue the path seriously when this realization comes that actually I am so much contaminated. I am so much fallen. And then what is the immediate thing you'll do? You'll take up the shelter of a pure devotee or association of devotees. You take up the lotus feet of Krishna and ask for the mercy of Krishna. In this way, the senses become purified. But one should not become, what you call, disturbed, or one should not feel that, oh, my senses are impure, so let me give up this path. No, don't do it. Even the senses are impure, go on doing your services. Automatically, you become purified. It takes time. Nothing is easy. What do they say in English? Rome was not built in one day. In English, they said. It means you cannot attain everything in one day. That's why it says, Utsaha Nishchaya Dharya. First of all, enthusiasm must be there. Determination should be there. And then patience should be there. You have to depend on Krishna. Let him give you all the facilities, all the purities, all the lessons you need in your life, and the strength to pursue this path of self-realization. Remember, on the path of self-realization, you are not alone. It is you, the path is there, and then Krishna is there. It means it's a transaction between you and Krishna, and the transaction 
is bhakti yoga in which you need help or you need mercy of not one devotee but hundreds of devotees because from every devotee you learn something and something and by in this way you become purified in this way you you rise above this system of varna and ashram and come to the platform of krishna consciousness so that is the subject matter of verse number 50 now if you go to 51 to 53 shri baba is giving the points <clears throat> first of all he says keep one's intelligence purified by keeping oneself in mode of goodness always try to remain in the mode of goodness so that your senses become purified now if you remember in the 14th chapter three modes were explained and the effects of three modes were explained in the mode of goodness the senses are pure uh, what do you call illuminating and in the mode of goodness you can pick up knowledge in the mode of passion there is desires longing and you end up in vain in the mode of ignorance there is sleep dreaming laziness so if you compare these three modes the mode of goodness is the best but still the mode of goodness is not the all the best but minimum we have to stay in the mode of goodness so that our intelligence remains purified by remaining in the mode of goodness goodness does not mean foolishness goodness means as per the scriptures mode of goodness means if you put it into practice mode of goodness is a typical life of a brahmin what is a brahmin's life what are the qualities of a brahmin just go back just is it verse number 42 yes verse number 42 if we are the qualities of brahmins which natural will come to you if you are in the mode of goodness it says samo davo taposo cham khanti ajavam eva cha gyanam vigyanam astikam brahma karma sabhava cham peacefulness is number one if i were to ask you is it possible to practice bhakti if your mind is not at peace is it possible no so very first quality is peacefulness control of senses austere prabhat is not saying too many austerities life is yes austerity is there but in bhakti yoga austerity is not so much the way austerity is there is there on the other parts on the path of bhakti yoga you can easily perform it austerity is Simple austerities. First austerity is waking up early in the morning. Fasting on the days of like Adashi. Fasting on the days of appearance of the supreme personality of God, like Ram Naomi, Gaur Purnima, Krishna Janmashmi, and so on. And then fasting half day on the appearance and disappearance of our acharyas of our spiritual master. Now that's not a difficult austerity. Next is purity. Now here purity means pure. senses have to be purified daily and the first sense has to be purified can anyone think which sense has to be purified first anybody likes to try also you have to give evidence anybody likes to try we have very senses first is strong and the ear bro Don't, no i am saying one sense so you pick only one tom yeah tom. yes Path Brahma, your answer is perfect. Atha Sri Krishna na badi na bhaved kriya indriya sevan mukhya hi jiva do jiva means tongue. Sayam eva swatiya. Once you offer your tongue to Krishna, then the purification will follow automatically. Prabhat says only by doing two things you go back home back to God. Eating Krishna prasad and chanting Hare Krishna. Now is that difficult? It's not difficult. But what do we do? We think that no, no, no. Maybe I'm missing something, so let me eat this and eat that. And you spoil your tongue. And you spoil your tongue by speaking nonsensical things, anarthas, meaningless things with your tongue. You cannot use your tongue in two ways. Either you surrender your tongue to Krishna and chant Hare Krishna, speak about Krishna, glorify Krishna's name, form, pastimes, and so on. But if the same tongue is used for speaking other things, which is called gramya katha, <clears throat> Sanatan Goswami calls it gramya katha, village talk. Village talk means, oh, look at my neighbor, look at this boy, look at this woman. 
what they did and gossip all the time, talking all useless things. Rupa Goswami warns us in the night of instruction in two verses, verse number two and verse number three. In the verse number two, he says, Sangatyagat. In this verse number three, he says, Sangatyagat. I'm sorry, Jana Sangha. Give up worldly man, uh, mindedness. If you want to become a devotee of Krishna, then don't become a worldly person. It will spoil your Krishna consciousness. That is called Jana Sangha. Sangha Tyagat means give up the company of non devotees. Because if you start keeping your company of non devotees, there is every reason that you will give up Krishna consciousness. That's why Rupa Swami wants us in those two verses. So that is how purification of senses continues. So if you want this verse, Atashi Krishna Namadi, I think Krishna Prabhupada has quoted this in the 9.4, if I'm not wrong, just go to 9.4, if you have Bhagavad in your hand. <clears throat> yes, it is there in 9.4. If you go to 9.4, you go to the purport. Mataji, you can read the, uh, the italics, the verse in italics. You're, you are uh, muted. Can you unmute, Mataji? Sorry, Prabhuji, 9.4. Yeah, nine four go to the purport. Purport, yes. Mm. You Read want the verse in the italics. Ataha Shri Krishna Nama di Nabhavid Granyam Indriya Sevan Mukehi Jin Vadwa Swayam Eva Spraha Tiadaha. Translation. Read the translation. Translation. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is... No, 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 not that translation of the verse which you just read. Okay. Lord Shri Krishna's name, fame, pastimes, etc. cannot be understood by material senses. Only to one who is engaged in pure devotional service under proper guidance is he revealed. In the Brahma Samhita 5.38, it is stated, Premanjana Charuta Churita Lochanena Lochanana Santaha Santaishu Vilokyanti. One can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, always within himself and outside himself, if one has developed the transcendental loving attitude towards him. Thus, for the people in general, he is not visible. Here it is said that although he is all pervading, everywhere present, he is not conceivable by the material senses. This is indicated here by the word Abhyaktama Murtina. But actually, although we cannot see him, everything is resting in him. As we have discussed in the seventh chapter, the entire material cosmic manifestation <clears throat> is only a combination of two different energies, the superior spiritual energy and the inferior material energy. Just as the sunshine is spread all over the universe, the energy of the Lord is spread all over the creation and everything is resting in that energy. Thank you. So this is the meaning of this verse. Those who want to learn this verse, remember the verse, chapter 9, verse, uh, verse number 4, purport. This verse is spoken by Rupa Goswami himself. And here the main word is jivvado. If you see the sevan mukehi jivvado. Once you start using your tongue, then the purity will follow. And when you talk of tolerance, tolerance means we should accept the life itself to be the mercy of Krishna. And even Krishna gives you happiness or he gives you distress. He gives you problems or praises. You should be tolerant and equal. That is called tolerance. Honesty, be very straightforward. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is written very much in the first canto. 
that this scripture, Bhagavatam, is meant for thoroughly honest people. Those who are liars and crooked, it's not meant for them. Because they will never understand Krishna. But those who are straightforward, honest, they will be able to follow Srimad Bhagavatam and get the mercy of Sukhdeva Goswami. <clears throat> in other words, Sukhdeva Goswami has the power to sit in your heart. Many people say, you may may not be knowing, or I'm giving you a bit of knowledge. Yes, Krishna is in the heart as Paramatma. But even besides Krishna, there's also other devotees, I mean, other powerful beings like Yamaraj, Lord Shiva. And if you take up Srimad Bhagavatam, Sudhya Goswami will sit in your heart. And in this call, even Prabhupada will sit in your heart and will give you his mercy. So this, keep it or bury it in the mind that when you are accepting the path of devotion service, you are not alone. have with you so many power you mercy. In this way, you'll get knowledge, wisdom, and religiousness. And these are the natural qualities which a Brahmin works. So that's why it says, first of all, to stay in the mode of goodness. Now, the next point it says, control your mind. Even controlling the mind, the first sense to be controlled is the tongue. If you can control the tongue, then the rest of the senses will be controlled. And when senses are controlled, the intelligence becomes fixed. When the intelligence becomes fixed, you can easily think of Krishna. You can easily remember Krishna. It is very scientific. This is the logic behind sense control. And we should not be attached to sense objects. You find that we all have some attraction for certain sense objects. Like many of us like to see beautiful things. Some people like to see beautiful actors and actresses. Some people like to hear nice, attractive music and songs, whether it's Bollywood or whatever it is, Hollywood, Bollywood, whatever it is. So we are all attracted to sense objects. But then we realize the temporary nature of the sense objects, that these are not permanent. Let me divert my senses towards Krishna. And that is how chanting helps you. It shields you from being attracted to sense objects. And then when you become attracted towards Krishna, automatically your attachment and hatred in your heart will go away. He says, Ich Desha Samutena. We had discussed this verse earlier in the class. Icha and Desh Desha creates moha. Moha means illusion. Illusion at once goes away when you remove two things from your heart attachment to sense objects or to Anyone in your, including your own family. We may have a wife, we may have children, we may have a husband, but our biggest attachment should be to Krishna. And know that even our family actually belongs to Krishna. In this way, this is called right intelligence. So attachment will go away and don't hate anyone. Don't show hatred towards anyone. Don't be envious of anyone. Everyone is a part and part of Krishna. Because when you hate, one person, do you know what is the effect? Anybody likes to try? When you create enmity with one person, do you know what is the result which follows? Anybody likes to try? The answer? What will happen? Prabhuji, it's a chain reaction and hatred will build up more hatred and you'll get the uh, same back. So whatever you throw out, you'll get that. I'm just trying yes. to... Yeah, it's a good answer. But if you go slightly a little more deeper, His Holiness Bhakti Virat Maharaj explained that if you hate one person in your life, especially a devotee, at the, at the time of death, you'll not be allowed to go to Vaikuntha just because of one person. So don't create trouble with anyone. Just because of that one person, you'll be told to go back. Go and become friends with that person, then you come back. It's not easy to go to Krishna. We may think it's very easy to go to Krishna. It's, it is not easy. So don't create trouble with anyone. Uh, naturally, a devotee is dear to everyone, and everyone is dear to Krishna. But even in your private life or even in your daily life, don't create hatred with anyone. Otherwise, what will happen? I give you the answer. Maharaj explained very nicely. Let's say you're chanting Hare Krishna, and you fought with someone. 
You are going to think of that person. You are not going to think of Krishna. Am I right or wrong? Yes. You are going to meditate on that person. You are wasting your life. You are wasting your time. So from the very beginning, it's better you tolerate it. Let go. Even if someone, even someone to his enemy to be with you, let go. In this way, when your heart becomes purified, it says, then this hatred and attachment will be removed from your heart and you will allow Krishna's lotus feet to, to sit in your heart. Then to worship Krishna becomes very easy. Further worship, Prabhupada explains that such a person likes to stay in a place where he can think of Krishna. He eats little and controls his mind and body, which is very important. Because if you overeat, you spoil your body. If you think too many things in your brain, you can't think of Krishna. So it's, Krishna consciousness is very simple, but for one who has a simple, simple mind, not a complicated mind. Keep your mind very simple. Now, it, and then become free from false ego and rise above the bodily platform. Narad Muni says, Sarva Upadi Vinir Mukta Tarpare Tena Nirmalam Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Uchite. Rise above the bodily platform, engage all your senses in the service of Krishna, and you will attain Krishna. There's no doubt about it. Don't think you are a man, a woman, an Indian, an African, or Mzungu, whatever it is. Rise above that. Come on a spiritual platform. That verse will appear very soon, in verse number 54, in this very chapter. Brahma Bhuta Prashanatma. So we won't discuss that today. Otherwise, it's like I'm telling you everything today. When you come to that verse, then let it reveal by itself. Anyway, now, once we come into Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> all the bad desires will go away. The desires will follow, which will be very, very useful. You cannot live without desires. So, desires will come, as Sri Prabhupada quotes in the purport, that a person will, should not be disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean. You see, there are so many rivers enter, in, enter into the ocean, but you never hear ocean leaving its brink. It stays at the same place. So desires will come, but be careful which desire you're trying to fulfill. If that desire is related to Krishna, nothing wrong. But if that desire is opposing to Krishna consciousness, better remove it out, pluck it out with the root and throw it away. Otherwise, it will trouble you. So in this way, always remain with your hands folded, with your head down at the feet of Krishna, so that Krishna gives you a good intelligence that you don't go for wrong desires. So here, in the same verse, the last line says, one can allow, uh, uh, sorry, Ocean, which is however full, but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. If you try to fulfill desires which are not for Krishna consciousness, you spoil your Krishna consciousness. But if the desires are there to please Krishna, then what is wrong? For example, you have a desire that one day I'm just a simple devotee and I want to become a Brahminical initiated devotee. What is wrong with the desire? Because you're going to work for it. And once you become Brahminical desire, I mean, uh, initiated devotee, you'll be able to enter into the altar, perform your Krishna conscious services, perform yagya, chant Gayatri, and so many things. Maybe if, if Prabhupada is very pleased with you, you'll be able to preach to people. So such desires are very, very useful. But if you have a desire which are detrimental to Krishna consciousness, the better you give it up. They will spoil your Krishna consciousness. So he says here, such a person will attain real peace, not the one who tries to fulfill unlimited desires that arise due to mental concoction. The mind is always creating new desires. Go and get this, do this, do this. And if you are crazy about your mind, you can never be happy. The mind will make you run everywhere from life to life. 
<clears throat> but if that mind is told or is trained or disciplined in such a way, no, not this. Let's go, let's go the other way, which is Krishna conscious way. Then everything is okay. So this is the sum and purport of these two verses, four verses, sorry. The fifth is that it does not matter whether you are in any varna. The perfection of your varna or your life will if you worship Krishna. And the other three verses, 51 to 53, explain so many things that remain in goodness, engage in Krishna consciousness, offer your blind intelligence to Krishna in this way. You will always remain Krishna conscious. So to conclude this verse, we'll go to 12.8. Just go to 12.8. That is what we should aim for. Who is reading? I should read the perfect, Prabhuji, or the translation? No, read the verse. The verse. The verse. Mm -hmm. Maya eva mana advasta mai buddhim niveshaya nivasesya si maya eva ata urdhavam na samshaya. Read the translation. Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus, you will live in me always, without a doubt. Yes, yeah, so this should be the goal of life. If you want to do bhakti, meditate on this verse. And keep asking a question to your own self. Is my mind in Krishna? Is my mind engaged in the service of Krishna? If not, then do what Prabhupada has told us to do. Automatically you will do. Hare Krishna. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask. <clears throat> Thank you very Time much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for all that explanation. Are there any questions? Yes, Sandhya Mataji, kindly ask your question. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, and Hare Krishna, all devotees. Uh, Prabhuji, um, just want to ask one question. Uh, if someone wants to get initiated, uh, mm. should they first have control on all senses? Uh, should be chanting 16 rounds? Should have given up all, you know, the four principles uh, and everything only then think of getting initiated? Or if they think that there are certain things that they're really struggling or say don't have control on one or two things, do you, or should they get initiated and then maybe they get the strength to give up those things? Just wanted to know the order. From you. It's a very good question. Okay. Now, when you want to get initiated, first of all, the desire should be, I want a spiritual master. Or I, first of all, your desire should be, that I want to accept this path of self-realization or the path of bhakti yoga. And then when you want to be initiated, you go to the temple authority. Where you, whatever city, whatever place or the nearest temple you have, is temple, approach the, the president or the temple authority and explain that I want a spiritual master. And then he will give you, these days there's a rule, it is called, that you have to do a course known as Guru Disciple Course. You do that course, not a difficult course, it's about 10 lessons. Once you do those 10 lessons, you understand what is a guru? What is your relationship with the guru? It's not that my friend is a guru, so I must have a guru, no. When you do that course, you learn so many things of what is a guru. After understanding that, then your question was, should our senses be purified? No. We have taken this path so that our, our senses will become purified in the deep course. But the four regulatory principles is a must and 16 rounds is a must. Once one person approach uh, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj and ask that I want to be initiated. The first question he was asked is, do you have two hours for chanting in your day? And the person said, no, no, I am a very busy person. Then he said, no, then don't get initiated. He gave a very frank answer. 
If you cannot give two hours in your day towards Krishna, to chant Hare Krishna, don't get initiated. Wait. Once you put it in your daily life lifestyle or la daily uh, timetable, two hours for chanting Hare Krishna, and you're able to chant Hare Krishna, at least for a year or two years, then you go for a spiritual master. Not before that. In, it's a very big, I mean, common notion in especially in Indian community. Oh, we all have to get a spiritual master, but they do not know what is a spiritual master. Spiritual master, except in spiritual master is not a joke. Except in spiritual master is literally indirectly accepting Krishna. Oh, Mahabhati Prabhu was explaining that uh, when you accept a spiritual master, it means you are serious in self-realization. Very clear answer. Who, who wants a spiritual master? One who is serious. If you want to do just bhakti out of some emotion, sentiment, then better not. Because who knows when your mood will change. But when you are already streamed that your mood is in one direction, that yes, I want to be serious in my path of Krishna consciousness, then go for sincere. So first thing is, are you following for regulatory principles? Are you able to chant your 16 rounds? The rest purification will automatically follow. Because switch master is so powerful and the initiation is so powerful that all those misgivings will be taken away. Impurities of many, many lifetimes will be taken away by the switch master. Having such faith, accept the switch master. Is that, does that answer your question, Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you very much. Um, okay. Can I also please ask when, um, when can we wear the Kanti Mala or a spiritual master will give a Kanti Mala, Prabhuji? No, you can wear the Kanti Mala if you are following the regular principles. Like you, if you're eating onions, garlic, drinking tea, it's better you don't wear. Because once you have this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Kanti Mala, the way I'm wearing it, then this is Tulsi. You can't put yes. a neck on your, I mean, your head on your neck with a tulsi and eat anything you like to. No, this is not a fashion. Put on a kontima uh, the day you are ready, and then when you are when you get initiated, you'll get this new. You know, the switch master himself will tie it. Right. That means you'll be blessed with the country Yeah. Okay, Prabhuji. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Okay. Any other questions? Prabhuji, regarding the Kanti Mala, um, mm. so this is um, uh, Iskon, but a lot of like the Vaishnav Sampradaya, they wear mm. the Kanti Mala and they eat the... <coughs> so I come from the Vaishnav Sampradaya and we eat onions and garlic and they, we mm. still wear the Kanti Mala. So is that wrong, Prabhuji? Actually, it's not right. Okay, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, you are muted. Prabhuji. Is it okay now? Okay. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Okay. So it is not right that we wear Kantimala and we keep eating all this. Some some products they do allow onions, garlic. But if you go to scriptures, not just scriptures, even if you go to Bhagavad Gita, if you go to the 17th chapter. Uh, onions, garlic is forbidden because it comes under pungent fruits. For example, you become a pujari and your mouth is smelling of onion. How can you offer arati? You are preaching to people, your mouth will smell of uh, onion and garlic is not true. I mean, sorry, it's not right. You yourself will feel, feel guilty. So like I, before initiated, I had one Singh friend. Of course, in my life, I didn't used to eat onions. But uh, when I had friendship with him, and uh, he used to come from Malindi, it's a town at the coast. Uh, when I was given the vegetables, uh, not meat, but vegetables, they gave me a whole bowl of onions. And his way of eating is that he would eat so much vegetables and so much onion. And I pick a bad habit. And then when I joined his school, I gave it up again. Because it was not right. I felt that I'm doing wrong. So why due to one bad habit, uh, it will bug your mind that why am I doing this? Your own conscience will say, 
that you're not doing right. Or let's say, after many years, uh, especially if you are a devotee of a good standing, people will come and greet in front of you and fold their hands. You'll feel very guilty that people are folding their hands in front of me and I am doing nonsense. So once you put on Kuntimala, even if you are eating onions, please give it up. That is my humble request. Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, just want to clarify, uh, sorry, something about Kanti Mala. If we are mm. wearing the Kanti Mala uh, mm. and if we have given up meat, uh, we have given up onion, garlic, uh, should we be only eating prashadam um, uh, and be chanting 16 rounds? Only then wear Kanti Mala? Well, Kanti Mala means that you accepted Krishna's lotus feet, number one. Number two is that you accepted the path of bhakti. So it's not that you were after you accepted. You are already on the course of ex accepting and you are trying to accept, then you can still wear Kundimara, nothing wrong. Probably you are following the four regulatory principles. Okay. okay? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Yeah. You see, let me give you one simple, straight answer. None of us is pure. Bhakti is going to make us pure. Chanting is going to make us pure. Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, all this is meant to purify us. It's not that we become purified in one day. Many people even now have a notion in ISKCON, in ISKCON itself. Okay, now I'm initiated, so I have become very pure. No, that is the beginning of purification. From that day, slowly, slowly, you will become purified. It may take 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It doesn't matter. But eventually, you become purified. For example, I am wearing this kurta. You can see my shirt, yeah? And then, mistakenly, some ink fell on it. And maybe I only have one kurta. So, I have to wear it with a stain. But as many times it's going to be washed, the, the stain will go away. In that way, we are all staying inside. There's so much dirt in us. So by engaging in the service of Krishna, like hearing, especially hearing and chanting, your heart will become purified and all the stains will be removed till it becomes crystal clear. I hope you understand the meaning, Mother. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, are Sandhya there any more? Yes, Prabhuji, yeah. I've understood. Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, you understood? Yeah. So don't think we are pure. And it's better to uh, take yourself to be impure rather than to become proud and think I'm very pure. To think you are pure, you will increase pride in you. Rather you think, I mean, on the other hand, if you think you are impure and fallen, then you're keeping a room for purification. And in the due course, you'll become purified. Okay, Prabhuji. If you, I don't know if you have some knowledge of Bible. In Bible, this is a very nice verse. It says, the kingdom of God is open for the humble and weak. In the second line, it says that of all the people who queue for coming to, to me, all those humble people, I'll not pick the first person. I'll pick the last person in the line. That means you have to consider yourself to be not fit to go to Krishna. That is the meaning. It gives you the same, same meaning. Okay. Anybody else has any question? Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there any other questions? If there are no questions, I hand over to Path Prabhuji. Path Prabhuji, kindly close the session. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your nice and wonderful explanation about the renunciation, what is the quality of the renunciation, and also very nicely explained. There is no Brahmana, Kshatriya, or Vaishya, Shudra. Anybody can uh, follow the principle and uh, accept the Guru and uh, follow the Shastras, then he will be supposed to attend the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he is in the renunciation stage. Uh, thank you very much, Prabhuji. I request all the devotees, uh, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra. 
para a glorificação da Deus e graça do Senhor para hoje. Lê de hoje. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama,